And then we have the ark, and then we have the altar that was built when Noah stepped out of the ark into the new world or the new creation and established the very first thing in that new realm was the cross. Something that many people think you leave eventually. You do leave it in the form of dealing with the old man. You do leave it in the form of the self-life. But it is built into the Lamb's nature. It is what we call self-giving. It is the Lord. It is the one we honor and we worship and we hold up so high. And so there is this thing of the the ark and what it represented. And we got into this, the, the main theme that I have set forth is dealing with these animals, these beasts. And we took this morning to take the time to go through the scriptures and show how these beasts, and particularly the way that they're worded in the scripture, to show how these beasts that were brought into the ark were things of the old creation. They didn't have faith. They didn't find grace in the eyes of the Lord. They were brought on into that vehicle in which, and, and all the beasts of all the people outside the ark, they died with the people. But God wants us to comprehend the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ and to have it inwrought into our lives so that the cross is not a historical event that we uh, just have faith in, but it is something of which is a very part of the fiber of our being. And that's why I wanted to start here in Hebrews 11, <clears throat> because there is this thing that there's a change of faith that begins to happen here. There's a change of faith that happens from the ark to the new creation. There's a change of faith and a change of, of dealing and seeing things. And Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Every one of us understand that kind of faith in relationship to the message of Christ and Him crucified. Every one of us understand that, that the Bible declares you are dead with Christ. You are crucified with Christ. We don't see that. You know, especially when you first begin to believe, you don't see it, you just believe it. You just, you, the Word of God says it. The Spirit of God bears witness to your heart that, that when Jesus died on the cross, He not only died for us, but He also died as us and there, thereby brought us into a death. But all of that is based on an early faith. All that is based on a faith that is, is hoping for something, as it says here. It is believing something that in reality it does not yet see. Does not yet see, not, not in its own self. Not, it, it's, it's, the picture would be Noah inside the ark for, you know, four months, beasts everywhere. And uh, he's believing in the death, amen? He believes it, but, he, but the animals are running amok in his life. <laughs> and so that's, uh, that's the area I wanted to, to address. If you will, turn with me to Galatians chapter 2, a scri scripture you're very familiar with, and yet I, I really want to address the latter part of it, Galatians 2. <clears throat> and who can guess what verse I'm going to go to? Verse 20, thank you. But again, I want, to, I want to more address this latter part. And yet, is the latter part, when it's talking about faith, not talking about this death? Because it's all one sentence, basically. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh now... Folks, it just drew a line between Christ living in you or Christ being the life and the life you live in the flesh. It addressed two different lives there. It addressed Christ who is life 
and then it addressed your life in the flesh. And he says, the life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the reality that I am dead. I am crucified with Christ. By the time Paul is writing this, this is not supposition. He has, he, God has worked in this man's life. This isn't just teaching. It's not just doctrine. It's not just good stuff. And it is good stuff. But it's not just good stuff. It is the reality of of all realities, to him, to his being. Do you understand what I'm saying? Not, to, not just to his head, to his being. When Paul says, I am crucified with Christ, at this stage, he's not holding on to some hope that is unseen as yet. He's going, look, I'm dead. My whole life is given to this life that lives within me. And, and he's living by that faith. But it is a faith that has laid hold of something. Not just a doctrine, but it is laid hold of something. It is the difference between faith when you're in the ark and faith when you're in the new creation. It's a whole different thing. It's a whole different reality. And uh, so let's, uh, let's turn to 1 Peter now. There's a scripture there that addresses this and that addresses the, uh, the uh, ark, as a matter of fact. 1 Peter chapter 3. In verse uh, 20, we'll read 20 and 21. While we're looking at this, there, there is to be understood then that there is a deep contrast between existence in this ark and life as found in the new creation. Can you agree with that? A, a very deep contrast between two different existences and yet they're both raised up out of the judgment. It's true in both places and yet it is not in rot true until you're in the new creation in reality. No, you, you, you are there, but I mean it's worked into your being. Okay? So that's, that's what we're talking about here. Uh, the scriptures here, which we'll read in just a second, are declaring that Noah's Ark represents baptism. Okay, Verse uh, 20, who at one time were disobedient when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, in which few, that is, eight souls were saved by water, the like figure under which even baptism also doth now save us, and let's just stop right there, that this does, rep the like figure that is saying, Noah's Ark represents baptism. And um, water baptism is something that new converts usually experience. Let me, let me show you a contrast to that baptism here uh, in Colossians, and then I'll make my statement. Over in Colossians chapter 2, in verse 12, it says this, Buried with him in baptism... And so this ark is representing burial. The, the judgment of the flood is death. The ark is burial. And the new creation is resurrection. And many people are believing in the old nature dead. Believing that all the old creation was done away. And that's good, rightly so. But they're assuming that the immediate thing after that is that you're in the new creation when in reality their existence is showing them that there must be some interim thing. There must be something to this burial thing. And then maybe that's why Paul preached death, burial, and resurrection. And if you skip a step, it might cause problems. Can anybody... Yeah, see that? <laughs> so I got some good hearty amens because there is this reality that we, we either face or we just lie to ourselves. Like I said, magic wolfle dust, everything is okay. No, it's not. Put your wolfle dust away. We're having problems. <laughs> you know, nobody wants to admit it. Everybody wants to be spiritual. I want to be spiritual too, but I'd like to, for it to really happen. I don't want to fake myself out. I don't want to just listen to somebody and go, okay, well, they sound like everything's good, so it's good for me. It's not good for me. 
I see things that of of those beasts that came out of the old creation that are crawling up my leg, you know, (laughs) wrapping themselves around my throat. I'm having problems with these guys. You could say, the ark is out of control. (laughs) All right, so uh, in Colossians, uh, we were buried with him in baptism in which also you're risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who raised him from the dead. So there is this reality of baptism and that we are buried and we are risen with him through faith. That's what you get in the ark. Through faith, and we're talking about just a belief that, okay, you know, anybody remember this? God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Okay? Okay, well, you know, I used to believe this way for healing. God says I'm healed, but (coughs) I believe it. Well, that's good. But you don't see it yet. So you apply it to the cross. The same faith, basically. And you say, I am crucified with Christ, but I sure ain't acting like it until God brings you into the faith of the Son of God. And if you didn't know there was a transition, you might be confused. And it might sort of freak you out about yourself. You know, and what's, anybody ever had this thought? What's wrong with me? Yeah. Let, let's have a show of hands. Anybody ever had that thought? What's wrong with me? I should have gone the other way, shouldn't I? Anybody ever not have that thought? You know? I mean, especially if, you know, I don't know if you read certain books or certain things. I mean, you will come away thinking, my God, I am supposed to be so stinking spiritual and I'm just so stinking. (laughs) You know, I mean, and it'll worry you because why? Because you care. Because you genuinely care. Steve's shaking his head over there. He comes to me sometime and he's weeping and he says, you know, Randy, just pray for me. I've messed up. I did this and that and whatever. And I just think, How sweet, because he thinks he's all messed up, but the very fact that he's all broken shows that he really cares, and he's after the Lord. I'm just going, he really loves the Lord. He's going, I don't love the Lord. (laughs) You know, you you see how that works? I mean, we, we get down on ourselves. And it's not good, folks, because there is an enemy out there. I know that, you know, you believe that you don't have any power at all. Well, he doesn't have any power except what God gives him. And he'll jump your case if you give him a chance. God has had to rebuke me severely within the past year about some of my thought processes that when I get down, man, I mean, you know, it's like I get down, roll up in a ball and say, kick me, devil. You know, it's almost like I'm invited. Hey, I'm down here on the floor. Want to come over? (laughs) You know, want to beat up on me some? I mean, it's at my invitation. And the Lord's been dealing with me. I, you should see, you, you know, I, you won't get it in this conference, but the Lord shared something with me during this conference already in a scripture that just, I'm, I've got, there's some things I have to change on my thought processes. There's some things I have to change. So you be in prayer for me, okay? Because I'm serious. I want the Lord and, and I, I can, I, you can't fix something you don't, you're not aware of. And I haven't been aware of it. And I have really, you know, allowed some stuff to happen and I shouldn't have. But I didn't know. So now I'm starting to know. And I almost wanted to, I almost wanted to gather up some of our people and just gather them over and share it with them and go, okay, hold me accountable and I'll hold you accountable. (laughs) You know, I mean, you know, kind of like, let's huddle, you know, instead of AA, it's, you know, BB, you know. I don't know what that was, but, but you know what I mean. <laughs> BB Beer Bonanza? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm sorry. <clears throat> All right. But let me give you a contrast to this Colossian scripture, and it's just in the book next to it, in front of it. It's Philippians, Philippians chapter 3. In verse 10, this is Paul speaking. 
that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Notice, he says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Now, I began in the faith movement. I was working side by side back in 70, 70 with Kenneth Copeland, hand in hand, knew him real well. And we always read this scripture, resurrection power, instead of the power of his resurrection. You know, give me resurrection power. Holy moly, you know. And, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's something to resurrection power, but there's really something to the power of his resurrection. Because you were included in it, and you were raised up, made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's more than power over your wallet. Oh, I took authority, you know. That's great, but, you know, wouldn't it be better to live by Christ? And I say, yes. I say Jesus is, Jesus is more than my servant to fix my wallet and fix my problems. And, and, you know, like the angels of God, oh, Lord, put angels all over their car. Well, the way some of you drive, you're going to kill them. Quit praying them on there, you know. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> There is this reality of the, it's not the power of your resurrection, it's the power of his resurrection and you're, you're his body. You're his resurrection body. Christ liveth in me. And that brings about power over freakouts when your wallet's empty. You know what I mean? You go, oh, fill my, oh, okay. You know, the only thing that's going to take my fear and bring me peace is if he puts something in here, which I would like, <laughs> by the way. So let me say right now, I'm not against it. <laughs> I'm not opposed to that, Lord, but, but I'm just trying to lift up your son here. <laughs> but this, this reality of the power of his resurrection and us being able to receive of his resources... Love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness. Oh, my God. Where am I in any of that? That's got to be Christ. It's got to be by the resurrection because in the resurrection I'm joined with him as his body and those things can flourish in me because he's divine and divine. And I am debranches. <laughs> <laughs> Lord help us <clears throat> okay so what basically what I'm saying is that there is this that you can accept and you can embrace the truth of, that God has revealed to you of being in Christ or Christ in you or crucified with Christ and all these things that we believe you can embrace that and believe that and reveal that but the power of it is not yet a work, at work in your life because you hadn't got out of the ark yet, you still got beasts you're dealing with. There's still things. Now, folks, again, the, the way out of problems is to know what the problem is. If you know you're in the ark, you know where you're at, and you, now you know where you're headed. And you can pray in accordance with that instead of thinking this ark thing is a, a, you know, a, a, a rabbit trail. It's where God brought you, and it's what God is doing in your life. <clears throat> All right. So, again, outward baptism, the, the, the ark is a sign of baptism. Outward baptism is nothing more than a sign of faith in the death, burial, and resurrection. You know that. If you baptize somebody in water, they're a brand new Christian. They say, I want to be baptized. Well, how many days have you been born again? One. Okay, what does baptism represent? I don't know, but I just want to get wet for Jesus. You know, okay, well, let me tell you, it represents death, burial, and resurrection, and it represents your death and your burial, and Jesus comes up, not you. Well, glory, glory, sure, let's do it. You, am I right or wrong? Oh, yeah, I just love Jesus. Well, where do you get a load of what this means? <laughs> you know, 
But here we go. And he comes up, and everybody that comes out of water bath, you never see anybody going, oh, my God, I'm dead. It's Christ. <laughs> they all come up like this. <gasps> Precious little things, huh? <laughs> because it's all by faith at that point. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> well, it's by faith all the way up to this ark, but there comes another kind of faith that God wants us to walk in. There comes another kind of resurrection. Yes, the ark does represent resurrection, but not the fullness of resurrection. It represents resurrection out of judgment, but it does not represent resurrection into the new creation. It, this, is, this is resurrected in him, in the ark, in Christ. Yes, it's true, but the emphasis still includes you. You get in the new creation, Christ is the resurrection and the life, and the way, and the truth, and your righteousness, and your peace, and, and he becomes all these things, and these become not theological facts, but resources. My Lord, the church needs resources. Christ. Christ in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, that's what we're talking about. And this this ark being that symbol of outward baptism, it's, it's great, but the true meaning of that is not found in water baptism. The true meaning of that is found in being crucified with Christ. In other words, theology becomes practical reality in your life. Okay, and that means more than that. I mean, it doesn't just mean crucified with Christ. It means raised with him. And it means him being the resurrection and the life. And so um, you can see that a real familiar scripture is in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 uh, that deals with the new creation. But I don't know if you've ever really read that scripture in light of what it's saying. But it, it's sort of a shocking statement, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Well, you know, that's, let's just admit it. Many of us are just believing in that. We're hoping in that. We're, it's unseen to us. But I believe that God wants to bring us into the fullness of the reality of the new creation now, and in that new creation, Christ is all and in all. And he filleth all things. And he's not, you know, run to like Lord. He's life. You understand, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, life is Lord. It's more to that statement than you might realize. The life is Lord. It's like my, my finger instead of, or my thumb, instead of, you know, turning around going, Granny, could you let me play the guitar a little more often? You don't really give me much opportunity. <laughs> you know, please, Lord. I go, look, dude, you're one with me. We do what we do by life and nature. Okay. If the opportunity presents itself, that's what we do. But we follow the dictates of life, not just rules by or from the Lord. Anybody see the difference? Rule by commandment or rule by nature? Two different things. Two different things. All right. So the contrast here is that the new creation is this wide, fresh, glorious place with freedom, you know. I mean, you can, being locked up in an ark that long with all them beasts, I mean, Noah was a man of God. He stopped and made an ark. I'd have just run and just run, and, you know. I'm free, I'm free, you know. And you can just keep running. Because everything's clean and fresh. You know, you know what I'm saying. I mean, what way? But hopefully when you get out, there's Christ now. And you, you dealt with them beasts, which we'll get into more clearly later on. In the ark, it is salvation from judgment. 
salvation from the flood. You're not so much aware of entering into the promised land as much as you are getting out of Egypt. You're, and, and in a, you know, there's this, all this reality of uh, salvation from judgment, and, and, uh, but there's also this sort of a sense that you are dwelling in a confined place and you're still wrestling with things of the old, the beast that came out of the old creation and the storm that's still going on around you out there. You're still aware of those kind of things. Do you know what I'm saying? And there's nothing sinful about this. This is the process, but if we don't understand the process, we're going to really freak out and you can stay freaked out for a long time. Okay? So let's go back. This is a really good scripture Colossians chapter 3 uh, to help us see this and to see at this stage to see the contrast of this. Colossians 3. I really like these scriptures. I, I For years I sort of taught, you know, immediately into the new creation and I would use the first couple of scriptures here in chapter 3 to prove that until one day God dealt with me that the scriptures went on. Okay. Colossians 3.1 If ye, and the, the true word there is since, since ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. You know, I would think if I'm risen with Christ, you don't need to tell me to seek it. I'm risen. I'm in it, baby. Does that make sense? I mean, if you, you know, it's kind of like you know, if you put me, you know, down in the Cayman Islands on a, you know, hammock out on the beach and everything, if you then be in the new creation, baby, then just enjoy it. That's what I would say. I wouldn't say then you need to seek it. What? Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead. Do you see it? It says it plainly. Why do you do that? Because you're dead. Here I am inside of Noah's ark. You're dead. Your old life is dead. The old nature's crucified, right? I mean, the, the flood has taken everything away. You're dead. Amen. Right? But it doesn't end there. For you're dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members. And he starts spending all this time talking about mortifying What's dead? I mean, some people don't tell you that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, they, they say, you're dead. Just walk around going, I'm dead. You know? And usually they say, well, reckon yourself dead. You know, in Texas they say, well, I reckon I'm dead. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's how we do it down here, you know? Well, I reckon I'm dead. Well, I reckon it's going to be a nice day. Well, I reckon, you know... <clears throat> It, it, it doesn't fully translate to Texans because we just go, okay, well, I reckon that's so. <laughs> but, you know, yep, doop de doo. <laughs> God's got to speak to us, which is a good thing, yeah, which is a good thing. Because he says you're dead, he says it's all taken care of, it's all gone. But he says, you need to mortify that monkey over there. And you need to mortify this, you know, you, know, you know what I'm saying, that snake over there and that creeping, crawling thing over there. You need to mortify that. And, huh? Immediately, it doesn't waste any time. It, does, it tells you both. Right here in these scriptures, it tells you the truth of death finished, the judgment of the flood, but it tells you, you still got beasts in that ark you're going to have to deal with. There's still something God is trying to bring you into in fullness. Is it not settled? Yes, it's settled. But it, excuse my Texan, but it ain't settled in you. <laughs> it's, you know, God's okay. He don't have monkeys crawling all over throughout him, you know. But you do. I, I'm, right now I'm visualizing the Wizard of Oz with those winged monkeys, you know. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <clears throat> I'm okay now. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. 
But inside the ark, there is this understanding that the judgment is accomplished. Inside the ark, it's settled. The judgment is accomplished in the old world. It's dealt with, you know, along with this fact that, that uh, we are already dead. The death is already taken. But for some reason, we still continue to wrestle with the judgment, wrestling with the judgment, as if it's still going on, meaning the beasts and the storm. And in reality, the new creation is settled in the heart of God, but you are on a journey. And when you know that, it helps you to focus in. It helps you to realize where you're at. It helps you to have faith instead of fear. It helps you to line up with the, with the Lord in his working. You know, it's, it's like a child that will go with you and you're helping them along as opposed to one that's trying to pull and go off in the opposite direction. And you're going, you know, look, you know have you ever, anybody ever, I'm sure most anybody that's had a kid, have you ever tried to help a kid and they're going, ah, ah, and you go, look, I'm trying to help you here, you know, or, or you know, even a, a hurt animal, you know. You go over a little bird, you know, a bird sitting there, and you go, let me help you. got a little hurt wing and everything. He goes, ah! So like, Dude, okay. <laughs> Not really. I'm just joking. <laughs> Three points. I know, it's sad. All right, let's go back to Genesis. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 7, because we're going to discover clearly in these scriptures that God was sneaking up on us when he put them animals in the ark. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 7, beginning with verse 7, Genesis 7, 7. <clears throat> now remember... It says, and I guess it's going to say it right here, maybe not. It's going to say a certain thing, but remember, it says that Noah took into that ark beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. Remember from this morning. All right, verse 7 says, And Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his son's wife with them into the ark because of the waters of the flood of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean. And of fowls, and of everything that creepeth upon the earth. Anybody getting the heebie-jeebies? There went in two, and two unto, uh, unto, Noah in, unto Noah in the ark. Not just in the ark, unto Noah. These are not now, as soon as they come in there, these are Noah's beasts. These are Noah's creeping things. These are Noah's fowls of the air. These are the things Noah is responsible before God for. And there's not just clean there, there's unclean. You see that? You see that? And Noah's going to have to deal with it, and he's going to have to move in the Lord with all this whole thing. And so you, you understand, within this, this confined place, this cocoon, remember we called it that, within this, there are both kinds, there are, there are beasts that, you know, well, first of all, remember the scripture says, the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these two are contrary to one another, anybody familiar with that scripture, okay, real familiar with that scripture, whatever happened to you are dead, you know, the flesh lusts us against the spirit, and the spirit kills that sucker. Took him to the cross, wiped him out, no more problem. End of problem. Some people preach it like that. Hello, still glad you came? <laughs> still glad I'm preaching? I don't know. Don't know about that, but I'm glad I came. <laughs> you know, I mean... God knows what he's doing. He's taking all, the, all these specific ones from the old creation and he's saying, Noah, you're going to have to give an account. You're going to have to deal with. You're going to have to uh, look at these things. And so here he is in the ark and the flesh does, you know, even though, you know, again, 
out, and here we are in the ark, and you look over here in the judgment, and everything's dead. You can say, you know, Bill, the, the uh, carpenter, all his beasts died. You know, Susie down there at the bakery, all her beasts died. And then, you know, some wild monkey goes, loo, 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 and you go, mine ain't dead. Man, you know. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know, you're laying there at night, and you know, some thing, big old tongue. Oh, my God. You know, won't these things leave me alone? <laughs> so, within the ark, that's where the struggle is taking place. And that's where you're trying to keep, you're trying to keep everything subjected. Just... Could everybody just hold on for a little while? <laughs> you know, just, could, yeah, just behave just for a little, just, if nothing else, during the conference. <laughs> right, amen, come on, let's be real. Yeah, let's all look good during the conference. Hey, fellas, in there. <laughs> let's all behave for three days, that's all I'm asking. <laughs> and so, you know, it's like, you know, on the plane here, driving here, you know, they're all, <laughs> you get, step on the property, uh, ring. Yeah. Oh, oh, brother, yeah, glory. Yeah, the cross, oh, baby, yeah, yeah. You people ain't fooling anybody. You know why? Because we know. <laughs> We don't need your proof. We got our own proof. <laughs> Why do you think I spent so much time praying in advance of the conference? Lord, just keep their beast in check for three days. <laughs> so there, there is that, you know, you're trying to keep everything, you know, subjected and, and wrecking dead, but we, we, we're, we're misusing the word wrecking. But, I mean, that's what we're trying to do. Okay, you know, something's acting up, you know, a couple of beasts are fighting over there, and, ah, you know, and you're, ah, and you're going, I oh, reckon you dead, I oh, reckon you dead. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that before. Right here with some of our pit. You want me to have them stand up? <laughs> and it's nothing more than the old creation seemingly alive. But here's the reality. In reality, they're not alive in the new creation. And we'll give the explanation when they get out of the ark. But we'll, we'll show you what the real deal is once you step out of that ark. But as far as Noah's concerned, they're alive. And he's having to deal with them. And he's probably a little confused why this is going on. I thought we left all of that, and I thought it's all dead. So, and, and you, you know, your spirit is bearing witness to the truth, and your spirit is bearing witness to people that preach it or write about it and everything. You're going, I know it's true, I know it's true. But what's wrong? Why, why can't I get this? So we pray harder, and we fast and we do whatever, you know, thinking that we're going to talk, you know, ourselves into death or something, or pray ourselves into death. No, God is going to have to bring us to face these things and to see them for what they are. And the cross has already happened, so you don't have to kill them. You just have to see it to such a degree that when you step out in the new creation, they're not going to be your responsibility anymore. Sound good to anybody? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that's where we're trying to go with this. Now, if I don't finish, the, if I don't give all the answers before the conference is over, I'm teaching this and finishing out for the, the uh, Bible school, so... We'll, we'll keep going and 
<clears throat> but, you know, the Lord is here. The Lord is moving. The Lord is here to open our hearts and to deal with certain things. And all he wants from us, he's not trying to rip anybody off. He is not trying to mess with anybody. He really just wants us to be free, but we're like that kid that goes, no, no, uh, this is going to be terrible. And you're going, no, this is not going to be terrible. This is going to be good. No, I don't think so. You know, I've seen your kid. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> ah, I know. Yeah. Son, we love you and we're for you. Ah, I don't think so. <laughs> you people are crazy. <laughs> Just kidding. I didn't say your kid was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> And I got people shaking their head right behind you about that. <laughs> in the mouth of two or three, in the mouth of two or three witnesses. <laughs> Witless, I mean witness. <clears throat> All right, let's move on. All right, you got your chart, right? Let's look at it for a second. <clears throat> so in this, we're seeing, and, and the top line there is, going across from, from left to right, is showing the cross in three different relationships. <clears throat> and um, the judgment with the flood is the cross and the old nature. The ark is the cross and the self-life. And the, we had to change it on the board but because uh, someone had put it up here wrong, but it says it, it is the cross as the new nature. And again, we're probably not going to have enough time to fully get into this, but I'm telling you that the new creation is not just believing what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. The cross in the new creation or this altar that Noah built in the new relates to Christ himself, not as keeper, but as nature, the one that fills all things. Paul saw that. When Paul first got saved. Jesus is the Messiah of the Jews in this little tiny area of this part of the world. Jesus is the Messiah of these people right here, this little group. Before he got through, he said, he's the length and the breadth and the height and the depth. He's the beginning and the end. He's the alpha and the omega. And he just went, oh my God, this guy is not just here to help us Jews or to fix something. He was meant to be all and in all and the fullness of all things. And the only way that that can happen is for us to be his body. Not in, not in terminology, but to really be his body. Meaning he lives his life, you know. I mean, nobody else lives their life, hopefully, lives their life through my body. You know, some of them beasts try to, but, <laughs> but in his body... He's supposed to live through all of his members. Can I get amen? amen? But look around at the church, what we call the church out here, and you don't see that happening. Why? Because that's not true in the ark. That is true in the new creation. But the way to get there is the first thing you do, you step out. There's got to be an altar, and there's got to be an understanding of what this altar represents. This altar is not for sin. This altar is not for the old nature, or anything of the old. This is when all the unclean beasts take off and you take the clean beasts and you offer them to God. It goes up, burned up, and becomes a, becomes a sweet savor of Christ. If our hearts are not there, we'll never reach that. <clears throat> The, 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 you know, we have this fear of if I go all the way or if I go anymore, what is God going to take? What is he going to rip me off of? You know, like I told some here, you know, I mean, in, when I was in Bible school, everybody was afraid that if you, you know, totally gave your life, here's what they said, if we totally give our life, God will send us to, off to Kalamazoo. I found out that's just in Michigan. That ain't so bad. I mean, I thought it was, you know, I didn't know where Kalamazoo was. I thought, that ain't so bad. Okay. You know? <laughs> but, you know, we have these concepts, and, and, you know, behind it is all this stuff we're going to lose. 
you tell me. Would you, would you rather hold on to the hut and, uh, you know, in the judgment and the flood? Is that what you're really trying to save some of that? Oh, are you trying to save the stench and the insanity of the beast in the ark? Is that what, you know, I don't, I don't really want to get into that new creation because there's an altar there. There's an altar every step of the way. Just look at, look at the man whose faith we're supposed to follow. Every step of the way, man, when he made a milestone, he'd, make, he'd establish a new altar. What did that mean? It was a new comprehension of Christ and him crucified. It was a new entering into Christ, and it was a new loss to himself in a certain way that, again, the new creation is not. You don't look around and go, this place ain't so good. It's everything God created you to want and desire and to bring fulfillment. But we resist that because we are fearful. Because as it were, there are clean and unclean spirits in us. There are antagonistic spirits and there are fearful spirits. You know, you can see some doves over there going like this, you know, and you can see a lion going, don't mess with me, you know what I mean? You, you know, so you got fearful spirits in there and then you got, Argh. You know, some people have a, a leaning toward, and some have a leaning towards, you know. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And sometimes you have one, then you have the other. You know, you know, you know and the anger and everything is just a way to deal with your fear or something. So, I mean, all this is all thrown in this one small confined area. So, we're talking about the cross in three different aspects and making that bridge um, from that one place to the other. If you're outside the ark, then there's just judgment. Uh, what does it say? Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 22. As in Adam, all die, but in Christ, all are made alive. <coughs> but you see, that statement sounds like there's only death and resurrection and does not include the burial in that one statement. Do you see what I'm saying? It, it's leaving out. So we assume, well, in Adam all die, but in Christ all are made alive. So when we get in the ark, we don't know what's going on. And it's, and it's I'm telling you, it can mess with you. <clears throat> Praise God. Let's go uh, back to 1 Peter this time, not 2 Peter, but 1 Peter. 1 Peter Chapter 4. <clears throat> How are we doing on the time back there? Okay. First Peter 4, let's read uh, 17 and, let's do 17 through 19. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Now this, this is people that have already believed in the, in the cross. Am I right or wrong? I mean, this, these are people that have already believed in the cross. They've already believed that Christ died for us, and these people have already believed that they're crucified with Christ. But he's saying, you know, the time has come now where judgment begins with us. God's dealing with us in judgment, but in a different way than he dealt with them. I mean, can you, can you see that? I mean, both groups must face judgment. This is, this is a thing that becomes a deceptive thing to us. We think they face judgment. And we don't have to. Is there some truth to that? The thought that they all died. But we didn't. We're alive. Yeah, but even by, by being alive, you're going through some judgment right now in that ark. But it's a whole different form. I mean, the world faced death from which... There was no resurrection. But Noah was facing a death where there would be a resurrection and a whole new creation. It's the difference of the death. Death without Christ, no resurrection. 
Death with Christ results in resurrection, and oneness and union with him. So this, these aren't just doctrines we're, you know, you know, I mean, do you think God sat up there before the foundation of the world and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Son are talking? They go, you know, let's make up a bunch of cool doctrines. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's do a bunch of cool doctrines and let's make them deep so only special people can get this. And let's just make it where if they believe the right stuff, then they're cool. They don't have to really know our heart or have this all hooked into us. They just need to believe some stuff. And we'll st I know, we'll, we'll call it a religion. I don't think so. I think that he had one thing in mind. The father wanted sons in the image of Christ. Jesus wanted a bride that was after his kind. And you don't get that immediately coming out of the old creation. Come on. You don't get that. You're not, you know, we, while we are of him, we're not necessarily after his kind. We may, by the beasts that are in us, we may be antagonistic. We may be selfish. We may, when I say selfish, I don't, I don't necessarily mean, go, that's mine, and that's mine, and don't touch that. I mean, everything is centered on what, how it affects me. Oh, I'll be involved with that ministry because I like the effect on me. No, I ain't going to be involved with that because I don't like that. You know, one of the things that we did this year with the conference was the Lord just told us, he said, instead of everybody doing the same things that you normally do, the cooks doing the cook and then the kids, people doing the kids and stuff, let's pray <clears throat> and people that normally don't do certain areas, let's see if we can put people in different areas that are not their personal strengths and see if it can be Jesus. And everybody said, nah. No, not really, they didn't. <clears throat> they said, well, praise God, you know, that's fine. And, and the blessing, and I'm telling you, like the kids right now, and the kids who are at these sessions, they are being dealt with by people who submitted themselves to the cross and to Christ's life, and they're over there doing it by Christ. They're not just good Sunday school teachers. They're, they're releasing Christ. And the people that were doing the food, not regular food people, and they said, Lord, you're, you're going to have to help. Anybody enjoy the food? was really, really good. It almost like had the savor of Christ in it, didn't it? <laughs> Does that mean the food before wasn't any good? No, it was good too. But the fruit of it is coming from Christ and from people who are saying, I, I'm not good at this personally, but I want the Lord to come through me. And putting themselves in positions that are not comfortable, taking them out of their comfort zone, moving them into situations where it will require that it be Jesus. And I'm happy to tell you, from what I've seen so far, it has been Jesus in, in our people. Amen. I've watched any number of them out of their element and watched the Lord working through them. And I'm so thankful for that. Because why? It's everything we preach. It's everything we believe. You know what I mean? I mean, why would we preach this, set up a place for it, and then live contrary to it? Well, that'd be dumb, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, okay, and I'm getting the signal that we're getting close to, uh, so I'll just bring it down a little bit. But, <clears throat> folks, we have lots of problems around here. We have times where the monkeys are running crazy or whatever, you know what I mean, the beasts are, are out of control. We have times when there's conflict between people. But as much as, as honest as I can be with you, I mean honestly without any covering or anything, as much as I know most if not all of our people really want the Lord more than they want everything to be perfect and are trusting the Lord and are forgiving people. How many times? Around here, folks, it's 70 times seven. <laughs> In an hour. <clears throat> but 
But I mean, there honestly, there is. And, and then, the, you know, and then after a while, you get tired of forgiving somebody for messing up the same way. Did you know that? You can get tired of that. And then you can get bitter. And we've done all of that. And then the Lord would deal with us and say, you know, we, we want to live this, right? And we'd all go, you know, we really do. I mean, we, this is really what we're about. And this is really important to us. And it's, and it's, even though it's hard, and even though we've chosen a road that is not easy, our lives truly, as much as we know how, are given to Jesus and to his glory. And it's hard sometimes. And being close to people brings out stuff that you wouldn't if you just went to church on Sunday morning and didn't see people other than, you know, you know what I'm saying, other than Sunday morning. When you walked in and went, oh, glory, glory. And everybody goes, oh, you're as wonderful as we are. <laughs> Here, everybody knows everybody else's problems. You know, it's not easy, but we do it. And we do it because there's a higher principle at work in us that we must have Jesus. And why spend this many years preaching it and trying to put it out there and just let it die? We can't and just let it rip itself apart. We can't do that. And, and I, we're not doing that. I mean, I'm we're not on the verge of that or anything. But I'm just saying... We must believe that if we can't do it here, what's the point of going out there and doing it? You know. So we have to make a stand somewhere. And that stand has to be practical. And it has to be real. And there has to be patience. Amen? And there has to be forgiveness. And there has to be... Um, enduring and at times we i see people i can tell they're just enduring and yet jesus said he that endures to the end you know so i go you know well that's good you know I mean, you can go, again our minds go back to no no everything should be like this well it's not here but we have a joy that is the lord and in the lord that surpasses you know it's a peace that passes understanding we i, I don't get it <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it, there, we still cling together. We're still holding together that Christ may get the glory that he deserves. And we do it in such a manner that if it's dying, if we're laying down our lives, if we're losing, if it looks like nothing but death, life comes out of death and maybe somebody else will get the offshoot of this power of his resurrection into them and it would be worth it all. We don't have to have it. We don't have to see it. We must see it. We must know that it's going to happen, though. Jesus is glory. Or we'll just stop. We'll just stop. If we all lose heart, we'll just stop. So far we haven't. It's been a lot of years now. How long has it been? A long time. <laughs> you, you know there's been a long time when they say it's been a long, long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can probably sit down and do uh, well i tell you what um, let's, let's pray is, let me just ask you point blank is, does anybody sense the Lord's just stirring maybe you don't fully know everything that's going on do you feel the stirring of the Lord anybody raise your hand if you do I mean that something's Something's going on. You know what? It looks like the Lord is really dealing with our people here. 